everyone. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll show you how I made this interactive clock. Um, I just, just got this idea after making my previous uh, clock here, so I thought I would make an interactive clock. I got this idea from a, like a ping pong idea and an interactive wall that I saw online. So I went to the drawing board to make um, a design that was simplistic and yet uh, retro. They would look kind of cool on the wall. I saw other designs that use LED strips that were cut, but I want it to be simplistic. So I went to think about some origami and I thought that I could just feed these um, LEDs through the back and that way it would be more simplistic so I don't have to do as much soldering. I did a lot of testing about the different uh, materials to use and I found that three millimeter acrylic worked best and then I could make these little hexapods that I could just feed the LEDs through. So here are all the materials that you need for the pr project. You need three millimeter wood panels and I'm using also three millimeters acrylic. And here's a handy list of all the things that you use. It doesn't use too many electronics and you may be wondering why haven't I used a 3D printer? Well, if you look at a 3D printer, the finished product is not very smooth. But if you buy some acrylic, it has a nice finish. It, also, the laser cutters are a lot faster. And so here I have everything cut out. And you can see it also has this little film that we can peel off. And then it just looks really nice. We also have to cut all the wood pieces used in laser cutter. And then after having all the parts, we can assemble the hexapods. At the very top, we just put a lining of super glue so that we can glue on the acrylic on the top. And then just uh, slightly move it around so that it's aligned. And then I'm just using another one just to double check that they perfectly align. The third part is to assemble uh, the, all the different buttons because underneath each pod will be a push button. And so I found a little technique is just to use a, a little elevated board, put the button on and then using a mallet, just push it in. Just make sure the legs are going horizontally and put all the buttons in there. Then I also add a little bit of super glue just so that they don't pop off after we're pushing down the buttons. And there's our final uh, button board. Now we can assemble the different box and I made it like a jigsaw puzzle so that this all puts together. Now we can solder on our resistors for our buttons. And I have this uh, nifty design using a matrix scheme where we just have to put a row of resistors and use an analog read and uh, it's going to be using rows and columns to determine which button is pushed. Some wire and wiring up. And then the columns, we have to go in a zigzag pattern for each of the columns. This is so that we can use the same resistors, which makes it more simple and saves on components. This is what it should look like when you have the whole thing uh, soldered together. Then what we have to do is add some solder wires to each row so that we can connect it to the Arduino. And there we go. I'm just testing the buttons here. And you can see on the computer that it can determine which row and column uh, is pressed. And the last number is the analog. The next step is to add the LED strip. And with the LED strip, we'll just feed through the different holes. And I got this 
after I got this nifty idea, instead of feeding them through, we could just pop off the bottom and just insert that. That's the other benefit of using the 3D printer is these bottoms can come off and then we can just easily click on the top. So we don't always have to feed the wire through, but the general procedure is you wanna bend it a little bit on the first row when it comes up through so that it's not pulling down on the button and then pop off the bottom of one of the hexapods and then put it on the top and then just slide it into place. Do that with the other one along the row and just make sure the end ones have the slots as the base because it will need to feed through the bottom. And then we'll put the very first hexagon on and then the last one, just at that last uh, LED at the resistor, we are going to make a little bend crease. And that's again, just so that it's nice uh, horizontal when it's uh, there and it won't be pushing down. And then we can just push in our last pod, just like that. And just double check that all the buttons are working there. Should be hear the clicking sound when you push it down. And then we're feeding it through and there's a little bit of origami going on here is how we're bending the LED strip. And it's quite easy. You just bend it in a 45 degree angle when it comes out. And so the LED is facing up. And then right at the crease, we're gonna also bend it away from us at about 45 degree. And then we'll just feed it in. And then uh, you'll see that it'll go in nicely like so. And then it's the same procedure at the top. When you get up at the top row, you wanna bend it as a 45 degree uh, angle and then bend it again. And it will, should look like that. And this alternate from going left, right, left, right. And then we do that until you have the whole thing. And I'm just putting the last pod in and that's what it should look like. And then uh, we can now do some of the electronics we're going to solder on the power for the LED strip. The red uh, wire is positive, and then the white one is negative. And then the middle one is the tap for our data line, which we can add a 300 ohm resistor to it. So we just solder up the data line, and then we just glue in our Arduino board on the back, and then we can connect all the different wires for the different pins and add our timing uh, module as well and gluing that on, on the bottom as well. Then we can upload using the Arduino you know, and just double check that everything's working. And the last thing is to put the final pieces on the side just for to make it look nice. And there we go. You can see we have our working clock. And uh, if you enjoy this project give a thumbs up and check out the comments for more details see you in the next uh, video